Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fashion Files podcast. We are now in the third episode of 2021. Very exciting. I'm so excited. It's a new year. I didn't really talk too much about like New Year's resolutions in any of the previous two episodes, but one of mine was I wanted to start reading a book a week, and it's actually been going so well. And I just wanted to mention it because if anyone has any good like fashion history books or any books in fashion that you think I might be interested in, let me know on Instagram or Twitter at the Fashion Files Podcast. I am working on a big sort of roundup episode of all of my favorite fashion resources. So that could be podcasts, YouTube videos, YouTubers, books, movies, documentaries, all of that good stuff. So that is something I'm working on. So if you do have any recommendations or things you want me to take a look at, let me know. That episode is probably like maybe a month away just because there's still a lot of reading I have to do. But just thought it was timely to mention that. Also, what are some of your guys' resolutions? If they're related to fashion, if they aren't, I would love to know. Let me know on Instagram or Twitter or actually on Anchor, the podcast platform I use. I think if you're listening on Anchor, you can leave me like a little voice note or something. So if anyone would like to try that out, it would be greatly appreciated. I would love it. I would love to hear from some of you guys listening. And yeah, that leads me into today's topic. So today we are going to be talking about the history of the Dior saddlebag and sort of how far it's come over the past 20 years. So let's get right into it. Before we really go into talking about the bag and the history of the bag, I think something interesting to note is that if I had this podcast five or so years ago and we were to talk about this bag, we probably wouldn't even talk about it at all. It wasn't a super iconic piece for the brand until more recently. So I think that's interesting to note that it didn't really become an iconic staple for Dior or an iconic piece like we see the Lady Dior bag as for Dior. It didn't really become that sort of piece for Dior until somewhat more recently. So there is still a lot of history to the bag, but as it's growing and gaining more popularity, even today, we will still have to look at how it gains popularity moving forward. So it was actually originally designed in 1999, and it was actually debuted on John Galliano's spring, summer, 2000 collection, so just 21 years ago. It was a style inspired by a sort of cowboy look. It had a really completely different look to what we've ever seen in the past in terms of handbags. It has a very unique shape that's easily recognizable as Dior, and it sort of lays right underneath the armpit when it's being carried. It was even seen on Sarah Jessica Parker as Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City, like many other iconic bags were that we've talked about in the past. The last episode, we talked about the Fendi Baguette bag, which was also made an appearance on Sex and the City, and that sort of did really carry the Baguette bag into its sort of it bag status. And so we were sort of intrigued to see would this do the same with the saddle bag, and sort of didn't. The bag its popularity really started to eventually decline a, about a year after its launch, and it was really not becoming a staple for the brand. So we did see in 2006, Galliano debuted a line of 12 saddlebags that were inspired by the 12 places dear to his heart. I believe there was one done after the United States of America and other countries. And then we saw Galliano leave Dior in 2011. And then we sort of entered the Raph Simmons era at Dior, which was a very exciting era, very different. He went back in time a lot more than Galliano did with Dior pieces and sort of the lines he wanted to create and all of that. So we didn't really see, we didn't see the saddlebag at all with Raph Simmons. It was just sort of a style he didn't go to. So then in 2014, we actually saw popularity coming back for the saddlebag when Beyonce was seen wearing her saddlebag out. And this also started to, for, started to lead us to see the bag as more of a street style bag. And we didn't officially see the bag come back until 2018, so just four years after we saw Beyonce wear it, when we saw it on Kim Jones' first collection for Dior Men and then Maria Grazier's fall-winter 2018 collection. This was also the year that they launched their massive campaign on Instagram. They worked with about 100 international influencers in 2018 to debut the bag and really sort of throw it back into the spotlight 
if you are someone who's interested in fashion and you're on Instagram and you are on Instagram at this time, I'm sure you can remember all of the influencers posting the saddlebag. I remember seeing it and I was like, oh my God, like, do I need this bag? What's going on? Everyone was posting about it. And it was sort of like just a very exciting moment for the brand. Didn't really know what was going to happen next with the bag or how it would grow and what other materials they would do it in and the monograms and all of that stuff. It was a very exciting time. So, and clearly it worked because we're still seeing the bag all over today. We're seeing the bag still and they're doing very different things with the bag. So they actually have introduced some new versions and they're actually... All of the saddlebags are mainly a little bit bigger than the ones in 2000 because <laughs> clearly now we all have iPhones and you want the iPhone to fit in the bag. So they've had to make them a little bit bigger. So the sizes that th the saddlebag comes in now are a saddle bag belt pouch, a saddle mini, and the saddle. So they come in a lot of different leathers, the Dior print, the monogram, all of that good stuff. So, and there's obviously tons of them online that are vintage too, which I wanted to note as well. If you are someone that's looking to purchase one, obviously the new ones are stunning, but there are also a lot of amazing vintage ones on eBay. You could look on the Real Real, other resale websites. I'll try to link a few down below in the show notes. I know I did that for the Fendi bag, bag video, and I think you guys really enjoyed looking at them. I think I had some really fun recommendations. I usually look on the Real Real. You can find some really great stuff on there. That website is like, it's one of my favorites. If I have like an hour or like even like 30 minutes to kill, like before I go to bed at night and I just want to relax, like you can find me nine times out of 10 on the real real. It's probably an unhealthy obsession and this is not an ad or anything. I just love their website. I think it's super user friendly. And also most of the time you can find things priced really well and really affordably. If you know your research behind things, yeah, they have great prices. Also something to note, I don't own a saddle bag. It's one of those bags that I do think about in terms of like how much would I actually use it and is it just a trend, which I think it's I don't think it's just a trend at this point. I think we're now seeing the bag. It's been around for 20 years. We've seen it come back now in 2018 and it's probably going to stay with us for a while, but I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to add it to my collection yet. If I did, I would probably want to look for a vintage one just because I think that's I enjoy like the look and like the little like chase for it and like really enjoying the process of finding one that suits you. So I might somewhere down the line, you might hear me talking about it on here. Maybe I would do a review or something. But for now, I do not own one. If you do own one, let me know on Instagram or something. I want to know like how you feel about it, how you style it. Let me know all of the good stuff. So that is actually it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to the next one. If there's any guests you want to see on the podcast in the new year, also let me know at the Fashion Files podcast on Instagram and Twitter. And that is it, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good one. Uh -huh.